Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had the return of a Planeswalker Tribal Against Odds poll, and in the end, it was the Wanderer crushing the rest of the Planeswalkers. So today, we're heading to Historic to play Wanderer Tribal Combo, and I gotta say, this is one of the trickiest Against the Odds decks that I think I've ever built, for a really weird reason. Normally, with against the odds the challenge of building the deck is uh, the winning card is really janky so it's difficult to make really janky cards work in the deck actually function the problem with the wanderers was exactly the opposite like og wanderer is pretty janky but the wandering emperor and eternal wanderer are both legit constructed cards like one of the best decks in standard right now is mono white midrange playing both of these cards in theory you could just throw in all the wanderers with a bunch of really good white cards and you probably have a pretty functional and maybe even kind of powerful mid-range deck because we know that it works in standard but it wouldn't really be in the spirit of against the odds so just like oh we're gonna play you know a, a rip off of the best deck in standard adding og wanderer to the mix that just wouldn't really feel right so it actually took some work to find a fun interesting cool plan that also synergized with the wanders but i think we got there so here is the plan of our wander tribal combo deck step one oddly is filling our graveyard as fast as possible for this we got stitcher supplier meyer tribe and Rafine's Informant, Champion of Wits. These creatures not only fill our graveyard, but are also good blockers for the Wanderers to help keep them on the battlefield. And then Jace of Perfected Mind, really sweet in this deck. Uh, it can come down in mill 15, which is awesome. Or if our graveyard's already full, it can come down and maybe draw us three cards to find Wanderers and combo pieces. So let's assume we actually get to fill our graveyard. What are we trying to do with the full graveyard? Well, the main synergy of our deck is... OG Wanderer with Command the Dreadhorde. Uh, the original Wanderer has a static ability. This is prevent all non-combat damage. It would be dealt to you in other permanents you control. Command the Dreadhorde, six mana, choose any number of creatures or planeswalkers in graveyards. Command the Dreadhorde deals damage to us equal to their total mana value. And then we get to put them all on the battlefield. Essentially, we can reanimate as much as we want, but we gotta take damage equal to the mana value of the cards we reanimate. Well, if we have the Wanderer on the battlefield and then Command the Dread Horde, we get to reanimate everything in all graveyards and not take any damage because of the Wanderer's static ability. So this by itself is pretty sweet. I mean, we can be reanimating 10 or 20 things with one card with this combo. But remember, we're not playing the Wanderer.deck or Wanderer Command the Dread Horde combo. We're playing Wanderer Tribal. So how do the rest of our Wanderers fit in this plan? Well, we take things one step further. As we're filling our graveyard, we really want to get Sundering Titan and the Eternal Wanderer in the graveyard. The idea is then we Command the Dread Horde. We get both of these cards and a bunch of other things into play. Sundering Titan comes into play, and we get to blow up land of each basic land type. Our mana base is built, so we're not really playing any lands with basic land types. We have a single planes just in case we get Besaged or something, but we're playing a bunch of fast lands and Innistrad lands, so we're not going to hurt our mana base. Hopefully, we're blowing up two, three, four, five of our opponent's lands. And then the Eternal Wanderer blinks Sundering Titan. Sundering Titan also triggers when it leaves the battlefield. So then we're gonna blow up two, three, four, five more of our opponent's lands. And then on our end step, Sundering Titan comes back into play. We trigger it again. Hopefully by this point, our opponent doesn't have a mana base left. So hopefully we blow up all of our opponent's lands and we get to reanimate everything from all graveyards. The only Wanderer that doesn't really synergize specifically with the combo is the Wandering Emperor. It has a different purpose so this is our main removal spell if you look at our deck list you'll see we're not playing any actual removal in our main deck outside of our wanderers every single wanderer is a removal spell so uh, the wandering emperor it's fine to reanimate but this is mostly keeping us alive why we're setting up the combo with our other wanderers mana base as i mentioned pretty unique just because we got to try to avoid the land types or we're going to sundering titan away our own mana so we got that one planes for bacheju purposes otherwise a bunch of pain lands and fast lands and innistrad lands some channel lands a phyrexian tower in the sideboard, Graveyard Hate, a bunch of removal, some counters and discard for control, and that is Wander Tribal Combo. That's our Against the Odds deck for this week, so let's jump into some games and see if we can pull off this ridiculous plan. Can we pull off the combo? Can we reanimate all the Wanders? Can we blow up all of our opponent's mana with Sundering Titan triggering two, three times in one turn thanks to Eternal Wander and Command the Dread Horde? Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up against odds time we are wanderer tribaling this week 
<laughs> playing some oh this was a hard one this was a really t oh my god that is too many wanderers <laughs> we're gonna ship that oh boy okay uh just kidding jace tribal this week but no well okay we have one blue source we're fine we're good <laughs> about it oh no aggro esper sentinel ah uh, well let's concealed courtyard and stitcher supplier do some milling opponent <laughs> good game apparently can't beat a stitcher supplier op for being a six card hand this isn't horrible hopefully jace can draw some cards hmm i don't know what our oh boy Loris in pain land hmm uh opponent Footfall Crater. Ooh. Opponent's probably a Death Shadow deck. The combination of all these things, any one of those things doesn't mean much, but if you add all those things together, it probably means, probably means Death Shadow. Well, let's Rafine's Informant. Do some conniving. Pain land, I guess. Yeah, we'll just pass. Play some defense. Cha, cha, cha. And, oh boy. All right, well, <laughs> so much for the Jace plan. <laughs> About it. Strick? Proctor. That's actually kind of annoying. Gonna make our Rafine's Informant a lot worse. Well, play the land. Pass the turn. Can we beat a Strict Proctor? Our graveyard's getting kind of full. About it. Our only main deck removal is Wander, so it's gonna be... Ooh, okay. There goes Stitcher Supplier and Painful Bond draw two. It's gonna be hard to kill Alurus. Gonna have to snipe it with a Wander somehow. Opponent going to Proct us. Down to 19. Well, champion. Oh, but Strike Proctor. Okay, get in there. I guess we gotta just go aggro and try to try to kill him. <laughs> Down to ten. I mean, we can pay Rafine's Informant and pay for the Proctor. I guess we're not doing anything else, so we might as well do some Kanavin. This makes a Rafine Informant big enough to block the Sentinel or attack through it. Since we are apparently an aggro deck now, this is so far from what our deck wants to be doing. Hey, you gotta you gotta play the cards the magic gods give you. About it. Is it time to get lures yet? Thankfully, we haven't faced down a Death Shadow yet. Greg and Rage Channeler. Strict Proctor number two. Our ETBs are never gonna trigger. Their graveyard's not that good. I guess the footballs are something. Although, we're gonna have to keep attacking, which means creatures are gonna die and then Lurus is gonna get them back. About it. Wow, chumps, interesting. I mean, I guess they just recast it with Lurus eventually anyway, but. Croxa, okay, that works with the Strict Proctors. All right, so Croxa just lives, which means we're gonna have to deal with a 6-6 six, six next turn. Come on, a Wanderer. We really could use a Wanderer here. Six mana Wanderer would be the best. That's our that's our best bet here. Or a Caves of Coilos. Unfortunately, this Croxa is gonna make us discard out of our way, so we can't even get back the champion unless we draw land. Gets and hits us, and hits us. I think we chump here. One of our outs is drawing Command the Dread Horde. Even though we don't have the combo, we could draw Command the Dread Horde and like get back a Wander, get back stuff from our opponent's graveyard so they can't lure us it, like something along those lines. So keeping our life total high enough that that's an out seems worth it. Although they're probably gonna just lure us back this DRC, I assume. Lure us. Doesn't cast anything. Well, we draw a Stitcher Supplier and we will scoop it up. So, Path of Peril seems pretty good against Lurus decks. Fatal Push seems necessary. And I guess we just do a little, a little, little trimming. Go down to Jace, Wandering Emperor. Sundering Titan does seem like, well, no, they're playing so many pain lands. Maybe it doesn't get them. They probably have some fe uh, shock lands, but mm, okay, that wasn't the best game. Not the best game for our deck. There's still time. There's still time. I mean, we are super janky mode this week. We talked about it during the deck deck, but like the biggest challenge of building Wanderer Tribal was that two of the three Wanderers are like busted constructed cards. So the challenge, like we could have built essentially a tier standard deck and played it in like whatever format, like mono white control with all the wanders like but that's just not against the odds so we definitely intentionally went janky mode this week to try to do something cool with the wanders after i put wander on the pole i almost regretted it because once i started building a deck i was like oh no these cards like the original uncommon wander is pretty jank but the other two are so good that they're actually really hard to build in a uh, an against the odds deck around although i am pretty happy with where we ended up this is the about as aggro as our hands can be just play a bunch of informants connive away the champion of wits and attack you with 
three twos seems like a plan i don't know if it's a good plan but it's a plan pony is doing some mulliganing yargle versus flibblethip we need a flibblethip partner pair there better be there better be a flibblethip partner pair for march of the machines what would be the best the best combo with flibblethip well let me know in the comments take a i don't even know champion of wits sure no that's fine we are on the rafines informant plan connive discard a turtle wander lots of mana plus we kind of want to reanimate it that is our main goal is to reanimate these guards down to 14 well our opponent's doing our job for us here with all their life loss but it passes we draw land play the land ruffian's informant connive draw eternal wow instant replay discard the eternal wander hit you for three down to 11. i mean maybe these informants can get there maybe the three two beat down isn't wow all sulfur sprigs pony has the painful mana base the painful man okay there's a death shadow the painful mana base is necessary for making death shadow work but it's also gonna gonna cost our opponent a little bit here what are we doing yargle all right opponent passes Ooh, take numa nothing great to get back we can't attack because they can grow the death shadow the jano isn't gonna do anything here like they again they can grow the death shadow so let's play the jano we could try to like attack and then snipe it but i think we're just going to pass and take numa maybe we can mill like wandering emperor would be the best probably to kill the death shadow mind spike Wow, opponent does not care. Oh, it's non-creature, non-land, okay. So we get to keep the informant, opponent gets to draw a card. Can we jank them? Oh, Croxa. We'll discard the informant. Yeah, Croxa down. Big Tignuma here. We really would love to hit something better than we currently have. Getting Mega Rafine's informant's pretty sad. Eternal Wander is too expensive. Maybe it's Jace. Distraction Jace, <laughs> draw a card. Oh, Eternal Wander. I mean, if we can get to it somehow. Well, let's play the Jays, full price. Our opponent's getting low enough that they might not be able to attack. Mill ourselves, draw a land. I mean, this technically puts us a land away from Eternal Wander. Strike Proctor, okay. Eternal Wander does not really care about that. Ooh, reanimates Croxa. Okay, we really need to hit untap land. I think it might be untap land or death here. So the Croxa sticks around. They can't haste it, thankfully. Dragon or okay, come on, untap land. Uh yeah, let's jump. If this is gonna work out, it's gonna be because we're wrathing anyway. Stay at 19. We do get a Jace draw. Okay, untap land. So this is this is what we needed. Eternal Wander. Take down Eternal Wander opponent keeps strict proctor they're gonna have to chump anyway we go attacking hmm jay straw i guess oh no because croxa comes back yeah let's just take up this turn our opponent can just get croxa back and make us discard what we draw so it's kind of pointless if our opponent gets back croxa we can blink it and attack for lethal so our opponent needs two things or to deal with the eternal uh the eternal wander because the blink gets rid of one blocker so we might actually wow <laughs> well i mean we started with the rafine informant beat out in the end it is the eternal wander that yeah there's the ggs it is the eternal wander that gives us the lid yeah we'll just attack we also have the mana to get back champion at wits now but hmm yeah i guess we probably want the blood chief thirst too should have probably brought that in last game one informant right now like that on to game number three we are on the draw this game which is scary strike proctor kind of wrecks us but there's not a whole lot we can do about getting wrecked by strike proctor opponent dragon rage shanela Ooh, fatal push okay well let's just kill the dragon rage channeler they really the downside of this is it means strict proctor will probably live drc filling the graveyard seems less than ideal against a lurus deck and a croxa deck and well okay there's the proctor Ooh, wow path of peril is a good draw though come on no thoughtsies path of peril basically says destroy all lurus deck creatures <laughs> it does line up oh another proctor okay Oh, and no land. Oh, this is great. Well, well, well. Deserted Beach. Path of Peril. Get rid of them proctors. Turn on our things. We have not come even a little bit close to doing what we're trying to do this match, but we're actually competing, which is good. We have fun against the Lurus. Must have a handful of removal. How do we do this? Play a land. Leave out the black mana. Play the champion of Wits. 
probably gonna discard this Stitcher Supplier, but we'll see. Ooh, wait, do we have to discard Wander? Maybe. It can snipe a Death Shadow. We're definitely discarding Stitcher Supplier. The question is, yeah, let's let's keep the lands. I feel bad discarding a Wander, but we have big Wander in hand, and hitting that on time seems pretty good. They do have some goodies that they can lure us back. Ooh, Greater Footfalls, or Footfall Greater, yup. And kills the Champion of Wits. I guess we could have discarded a land after all. Well, let's play another Champion of Wits. Some looting. We might have to keep both Eternal Wanders. It's awkward because they're legendary, but we've seen our opponents playing an absurd amount of discard. Like, so much discard. Yeah, let's pitch the Mire Triton. Well, I mean, next turn we do get to start Eternal Wandering. Uh, goes a greater. I mean, that's pretty good because we probably have to kill this Lurus. This Lurus just sticking around is going to be really bad. Let's see how good six mana wander is. Bone it. Ooh, only a 1 1 at the moment. Cycles a crater. I'm surprised our opponent's not more focused on casting stuff with Lurus. Well, play the land. Do we just eternal? I guess we do. What do we do with it though? We can kill the Lurus. The Death Shadow will live. That's probably where, like there's there's a lot of goodies. We do not want this Trick Proctor coming back. We're one man away from getting back Champion of Wits. We can just blink the Lurus. That might be the best bet. Yeah, let's just get rid of it for the turn. Right now, the Death Shadow is not deadly, although it can become deadly very quickly. But it's only got one pain land, though, and it's the. Ooh, painful mons. Ooh, it won't impact. Okay. Kills the champion. I don't know. Uh, our opponent putting the footfalls on the pain land might have been a mistake, because now they can't tap it for damage and to give trample and haste. This mana base actually would get wrecked by a Sundering Titan if we could get one. What do you got? We're hoping our opponent runs out more creatures. And then we can Eternal Wander to Wrath them. Okay, another Proctor. Well, if they both go at Eternal Wander, then we can't Wrath next turn, which is bad. So you're attacking us for two? Huh, that was an interesting attack. Okay, uh, well, well, if you would like us to Wrath with Eternal Wander, we will oblige. Uh, I guess you get to keep the Proctor for now. And... Play Rafine's Informant, pay for the Proctor, discard Stitcher Supplier, and I think we just run out Meyer Triton. We don't get the ability, but having a Death Toucher seems relevant against potential hasty Death Shadows. All right, opponent, what do you got? Mind Spike. Ooh, so Wanderer's down. This is interesting. This is gonna be, this is a top deck war. This Proctor is actually an issue because being able to land, get back champion the Wits would be so good. It would probably win us the game, but the Proctor is actually shutting that down. Bone it kills the Wanderer. Oh, oh, Command the Dread. Oh my goodness, we're at 15. Oh, this is, this is the best draw. We do gotta be aware of our opponent getting stuff back. Oh, this also lowers our life for Death Shadow. Wait, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So it's five life, so we don't have the Wander, so we are paying life for this. Six, seven, eight, nine, maybe we just take all of our opponent's stuff? So that's nine life, we'd go to six, and we should be able to defend ourselves against the Death Shadow. Let's get those five. I think this should be enough to win us the game. We would like to play your deck now, opponent. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my god. They had manit. Wow, that is one. Oh, into Death Shadow. My goodness, it's a 10 10 hasty Death Shadow. Oh, we went from like 100% to win to 0% to win. That manitize. That was one of the best. I played a lot of manitize. That was one of the best. That was getting a game ending command the Dread Horde. And they top decked the another command. We're at five though. Five is not a lot. Wait, we can grow a Death Shadow as big as our opponent's Death Shadow to not die to Death Shadow. So we command the Dread Horde. Nope, thankfully no mana tithe. Get Strict Proctor. Uh, actually, hmm. Actually, let's attack first. Get rid of the Strict Proctor. Opponent's gonna go to one. I think this is better. So opponent goes to one. Now we can command the Dread Horde. Without the Strict Proctor, I think we can get Death Shadow Lurus go to one. And then Lurus can recast our stuff next turn. Wow, this was a ridiculous game. Opponent had one of the greatest mana ties of all time, but then we topped them back. Our Death Shadow is big as a Death Shadow can be. So unless our opponent can get like a hasty flyer here, 
just to land. Oh my goodness, we got there. We didn't see the full combo. We didn't see the full combo with the Wander, but we did see Command Threadward in a, this was one of the most interesting games of Magic I've played in a while. What an interesting close. Wow, another three Command the Dread Hordes in a row. Well, we will just attack and we get there. And that might have not been the full Wander combo, but that was an amazing game of Magic. Magic is such a great game. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Against the odds time, we are still trying to pull off the the Wander Command the Dread Horde Wombo combo. This is not a one land one keep deck. <laughs> uh, ooh, this is interesting. We can fill the graveyard pretty quick. We have the Command the Dread Horde. We don't have uh, the Wander. Yeah, let's put the Shipwreck Marsh to the bottom. This could work. We'll see. Oh God. Oh no. Okay. Well, Green Devotion. Well, hopefully they have a bad hand. Kays of Koilo, Stitcher Supplier, Mills and Guards. I mean, this is, well, okay, we milled nothing of note there. This is scary. Thankfully, no mana, do well, okay, just kidding. <laughs> There's an Elvish Mystic. The question's gonna be, do we live long enough to even try to command the Dreadhorde? Hit you with the Stitcher Supplier. I think we just sack the Stitcher Supplier, and then we can Meyer Triton and Stitcher Supplier, and okay, Sundering Titan, Eternal Wander, okay. Okay, Meyer Triton, Mill two, Gain two, Stitcher Supplier, Mill three, Sundering Titan Jace. I mean, the graveyard's getting juicy. So one, two, so we have four mana, five mana, Boy, we still need like three turns. That's a, that's a, oh no, Nick those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, green devotion's pretty, oh no, my God. Well, I guess we just gotta mostly hope that our opponent doesn't have action. Chase, no sacrificing, draw. Wow, more wanders. There's the, okay, there's the land. Like we just gotta live two turns. We gotta live two turns and maintain a high life total. That's gonna be the hard part. We might live two turns, but if we live two turns and we're at three life or something, command doesn't do anything. Opponent looking at our graveyard. Yeah, there is a command the dread horde there, so our opponent knows that we Oh now we're definitely dead. Well, get our one basic. Yeah, now we need three more turns, and that is not happening against this setup. Yeah, well, Green Devotion is pretty butt. Whoa, my God. Oh, my God, they have so much mana. We can block a thing with Meyer Triton. I guess it doesn't really matter. Everything makes so much mana here. Ten. I, none of this actually matters in in real life, right? We're already at ten. Yeah, we're just dead. All right. Not confident in this match. I'm not confident. Green Devotion, Thought Seize seems necessary. A little bit of removal, perhaps. Faster removal, Path to Peril. Uh, fracture, Fracture seems pretty good. Can get a Planeswalker and it can get the Ley Line if they have it. Go down Meyer Triands, go down. Sundering Titan's not gonna be great. Our opponent's all forest. So it's blow up a land, and even if we blink it, it's like two or three lands. It's much less exciting against decks that are playing all one color. Oh uh, yeah, let's just do some trimming, I guess. We're gonna try to, I guess, be a control deck? I never beat this deck. It, uh, it doesn't matter what I, I mean, I occasionally beat it with like not against odds decks, but uh, I feel like even if I'm playing not against odds decks, I usually lose. Uh, yeah, this hand isn't gonna do it. This is awkward because we don't actually have a black source, which is very sad. We have the ability to kill a mana dork. We don't have the mana. Well, no ley line at least. That's a bit of good news, but on it, forest. All right, black source. Jace. All right, well, I do like the amount of removal we have. Only an orange tribe, that's a lot of mana. Well, there's the black source. Oh, so we can kill the Llanowar, but it's a turn too late. Now the now there's three Llanowars on the battlefield. Thanks to this Llanowar tribe. Uh, how about, no, Think house, mm-hmm. And, Nessa, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And an Elvish Mystic, sure. That's a, a fast start. Untaps the forest, hits us for three. I mean, we can fracture the Nissa. So we can fracture the Nissa, and then we can Eternal Wander the tribe, maybe? We're not fully dead, uh, opponent. And now we're fully dead. <laughs> what a hand, what a, I mean, that's what Green Devotion does, but yeah, double Nissa. 
Down to 10. We untap. It's a tap land. And we'll scoop him up. We'll get him. We'll get him next time. Mono Green Devotion is not the matchup for our fun janky combos. Against the odds time, we are playing some Wanderer Tribal combo, I guess? Command the Dreadhorde, Wanderer Tribal. We're on the draw, and ooh, this hand actually looks pretty good. Couple ways to fill the graveyard, couple of Wandering Emperors for removal. At least we don't have a handful of Sundering Titans. Fortified Beach Head and Esper Sentinel. Shh. Ooh, is this Soldiers? Interesting. Well, Stitcher Supplier, mill some cards. I guess Jace isn't horrible. Secluded Courtyard for a moment, and Recruitment Officer, and no attacks. Well, let's keep stitching. Stitcher Supplier, part two. Mill a bunch of lands that we kinda wanted to draw. Although, I mean, in theory, this Champion of Woods should make sure our mana works. I mean, this isn't a very combo-y hand, but Double Wandering Emperor seems good against Soldiers. And Stitcher Supplier. <laughs> the, the wall of defense here against all these X-1s. Ranger Captain of Eos. Probably more Esper Sentinels. Uh, multiple Esper Sentinels are gonna be an issue. Yeah, another Esper Sentinel. I mean, we got blockers, but uh, casting these Planeswalkers is going to be painful. We draw a land, which isn't bad. Let's just Champion of Wits. Uh, what do we do about double Esper Sentinel? I really don't want to just play stuff into it. That's so brutal. Our opponent has a Ranger Captain of Eos, which which means they are not going to automatically pass ever. Opponent has returned. We will, oh, well, we're pitching a Sundering Titan. Yeah, let's pitch a Wandering Emperor. Siege Veteran and Esper Sentinel. Mm hmm. Oh, these Esper Sentinels. Please attack with them. Hmm. Opponent passes. Wow, all right. Aggressively sacking the Ranger Captain of Eos, which is actually kind of good here. Means we can't play a Planeswalker. We can flash in a, oh, there's a command too. Run out the Meyer Triton. Oh. oh, what do we do? We can flash in Wandering Emperor to eat something potentially, but our opponent's gonna draw two cards, which is so many cards. Like we don't win that exchange. Like we get rid of one thing, but give our opponent two things. Opponent, tap land. No, not another one. Esper Sentinel's a good card. Okay, Ranger Captain of Eos. Esper Sentinel number three, Tron Assembled. <sighs> I feel like we're losing very slowly, but we are really losing, because if we do anything, our opponent just draws so many cards. And if anything dies, they get tokens. Or, wow, they sack again, okay. I mean, we don't want to cast anything into this board anyway, but we probably have to at some point. If we could snipe this, oh, I don't even, oh no, another Siege Veteran. I was gonna say if we could snipe the Siege Veteran, it might be worth it. So opponent is sort of out of cards, but not really. You know what we need? We need to, oh, if we could do this without our opponent drawing infinite cards, it would be much better. But we need to, we need to get Eternal Wanderer to Wrath, I think, is probably our one sort of realistic plan. Oh, do we have to Wandering Emperor? It feels so bad. We also need to keep our life total up for this command because we haven't drawn original Wanderer yet. Yeah, block, block, block. I think we do have to bite the bullet in Wandering Emperor. Wandering Emperor and we can tick up to give. Yeah, you get to draw three. <laughs> Brutal. We get to take up to give Champion its first strike and eat a token. And then a bunch of stuff dies. Opponent gonna get tokens with the Siege Veterans. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Plays a land pass. Oh, there's the Wander. Yeah, we have the entire combo. There's just no, yeah, we're, we're in such bad shape. Would you like to draw three? <laughs> this is literally an Esper Sentinel win. I feel like we would have a shot if it wasn't for the Esper Sentinels. Land, we need a land. Okay, there's lands. Well, tick down the Emperor, pass the turn. I mean, there's some world where we can command the Dreadhorde next turn and maybe get in this? The graveyards are full. About it. Oh, are we dead? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah, by Elspeth's command, sure. If our opponent just swings with everything, we're dead because of Harbin here. 
Well, we kind of made it close-ish, sort of. Get a bunch of triggers. We did miss lands for a minute. If we had hit our lands quicker, maybe command could have saved us, although this Harbin with a big board still gonna be a problem. And there's the attack and dead. All right, all right, all right, all right. Soldiers, you know, pretty, pretty good. Also, those Esper Sentinels, that was a real problem. Well, Path of Peril coming in. Fatal pushes. Go down a Sundering Titan. And maybe we got to go down one OG Wander and, yeah, Jace. Let's uh, let's run it like that. Well, we got some Rass. Path to, Path to Peril is pretty helpful here. Maybe we can do the control thing to set up uh, set up the combo in the late game. Game number two. It's a bunch of lands, but last last game the problem was not drawing lands, so maybe that's a good thing. We got blockers for the early game. That's also a good thing. Opponent Mulliganing. Oh, again. Okay, can we go to four? How about three? Keep it going. Keep it going. Take the one card challenge. Can soldiers beat an against the odds deck with one? <laughs> One card starting in. All right, opponent's gonna go to five. Well, uh, concealed courtyard go. Play the land and the Raven Standard Bear. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play this card. Pay to discard a card, make a 1 1 soldier. All right. Well, I guess that's a way you can prevent flood, although the reward's pretty low. Two mana and a card to make a 1 1 does not seem great. It is a tribe member, though. I can see it being a one of tutor target. That would make sense. If you just want to play one to get it with Ranger Captain. Well, Stitcher Supplier. Ooh, there's a champion of wits. No attacks. I think we're going to wait on the informant. Since we have the champion of wits, we kind of want these lands. And we definitely have things that we want to discard in the future. Passes. Well, with two informants, I guess running one out's fine. I don't know about mulliganing and then discarding discarding some of your precious cards to make 1-1 one, one soldiers. That is rough on a mulligan. Oh no, it's another ability that can be... Oh, what is it with soldiers having abilities that don't let you auto-pass the turn? Since our opponent might want to pay 2 and discard a card to make a 1-1. One, one, although there's not really anything you can do about it. Arena's brain is like barely smart enough to sometimes auto-tap. You don't want Arena deciding when. We might just discard the champion. The question is, are we trying to build up lands to eternalize champions or are we gonna try to discard lands yeah let's pitch a land i guess we're gonna hit our land drops eventually anyway rafines and format now we can play the format and maybe loot away the champion opponent all right let's resolve i think our opponent just realized that their clock was running i'll discard the champion maybe we should have kept the attic our ways yeah we only have one blue source that's actually kind of awkward so we need to not just draw a land but a blue land opponent cycles rafine's tower yeah we probably should have held on to the attic our ways and discarded one of the other lands and oh god mural that's gonna make a lot of soldiers well stitchers supplier mills and cards Wow, three champions. Oh, I really hope we draw a blue source. We need one more land and it needs to make blue mana. And then we have three champion of wits in the graveyards. How bad is this mural gonna be? Right now it, so we do have the death. To, ooh, sky strike officer and okay. So we get to kill it, but it makes five soldiers and then they can draw with sky strike. Ooh, that's not great. All right, opponent attacks. Well, Meyer Triton, death touch, paying off. Get rid of the mural. Oh, that's a, that's a draw. That is a draw. That is a wander. That is an eternal wander. So opponent, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, they do get to draw three cards, which isn't ideal. We get to reset the board. Definitely, definitely, definitely ticking down here. So opponent, yep, gonna draw a bunch of cards. Keep an informant and our opponent can keep the one one that they discarded a land and paid two to make. They, our opponent paid a lot for that one one. It would be... It would be heartless of us to uh, to wrath it away. <laughs> so you, you can keep it. Uh, all right, Stidger's Blyer. Mill, uh, a blue source that we wanted. Another blue source that we wanted. Pass the turn. I mean, we would like this Eternal Wanderer to live. I don't know if that's how practical that is. We'll see. If our opponent has a removal, that, that very expensive 1-1 one -one might actually kill our Planeswalker. Sky Strike Officer and Hazard Marshall. Blue mana. Wander's dying, no matter what. 
Hmm, I guess we just make the samurai. Like, no matter what we do, it can die to Sky Strike Officer. Hold on to the informant so we can connive next turn. The other option was like blink informant to connive on our end step, but that doesn't feel great. Abundant. Uh, Ooh, valiant veteran to grow the dorks. Get in. Kills Eternal Wander, makes a token. These Sky Strike officers have been huge for, ooh, okay. Ranger Captain of Eos. The Sky Strike officers have been really big. Like, uh, it's allowed our opponent to rebuild from the Wrath. Gets a recruitment officer. I guess I figure we have enough mana this time. Wow. Blue mana. Hey, that's a good one. All right, Deserted Beach. Eternalized Champion of Wits. Now we're in business. We can do this a bunch of turns in a row. There's a path apparel too. Discard informant, discard shipwreck marsh. Opponent gets to draw a card. Opponent. Ooh, another sky strike officer. Esper Sentinel, recruitment up. So it's gonna be just like that eternal wander. We're gonna get to wrath, but our opponent, our opponent's gonna refill their hand on the way out. Opponent gets in, hits us down to 19. Well, there's the fourth champion of Wits. I mean, we definitely got a Wrath here. How much mana do we have? We path the peril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could path the peril, not pay for Esper Sentinel champion of Wits. It's probably better just to just to pay. I guess we might as well. Attacks like this are so funny. Like, I mean, maybe our opponent takes it four, but our opponent is, they've sniffed it out that a Wrath is coming. Opponent blocks, draws a card. I mean, I guess they can only draw one more card. And yeah, I mean, we might as well sack something. It's gonna die anyway. Path of Peril, cleave it. I don't think, yeah, I mean, I don't know why our menu is tapping. I don't think we're gonna, we're gonna play the Champion of Wits anyway. Pay for the Sentinel, draws a card. All right, so Pwn's only got three cards in hand. I mean, we're, <laughs> Kind of winning the card advantage war, thanks to these champion awards. Let's see if they can rebuild yet again. Thalia. I mean, we got enough mana that's not gonna stop us from doing things, but it's a little annoying. I think we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait and try to set up the combo. We could just command a bunch of stuff here, but we have these champions, so we should be able to find a wanderer, right? Discard champion and discard, I guess a wandering emperor. Oh, I really want to find, really want to find the Wanderer. We haven't seen any, oh, there's one, yeah. Okay, so we still have like two left. We only got 20 cards in our deck. Yeah, that's fine. We can just path the peril again. Ooh, Wanderer, wait, can we do it now? Oh no, because of Thalia. Okay, we need one more turn, we need one more turn. Next turn we can do everything, I think. So let's just path the peril. We don't even need to cleave. Sweep the board. We're not gonna run out the wander, uh, the wander, because our opponent has the creature land. Recruitment officer, sure. Oh boy, this is gonna be sweet. Oh, this is gonna be sweet. I think we're actually doing it. Found it. Recruiting. Please not a Thalia. Siege veteran. Sure. It's happening. Oh, there's no cards in hand, so there's no counter. All right. And uh, I think we're gonna put a few things into play. How about every soldier? <laughs> There are so many dead soldiers. So many dead soldiers this game. Yes, and we will take them all. 11, 12, our graveyard. Uh, I don't think we want the mill stuff. We are, well, I guess it's fine. This game's about to end. We do not have that many cards left in our library. We don't get many chances to do this. We just gotta, we gotta go big. 19, how about 19? We'll leave the stitcher suppliers. Actually, yeah, let's not get the Meyer drain. It's too risky. We don't need them. We're getting all these soldiers in the Sundering Titan. 16's enough, 16's enough. We don't want to mill out. It would be so bad to do this and then mill ourselves out accidentally. <laughs> Command the Dread Horde. Who's the soldier deck now, opponent? Who's the soldier deck now? <laughs> Fona says, oops. We will grab a Stitcher Supplier with Ranger Captain of Eos. One of each land. Opponent is not playing many basic lands, are they? And opponent, done, done, done. And that is the combo, that is the combo. I can't believe we did it against soldiers. That was a long, grindy game. Uh, well, we'll bring in a little more removal. Really don't want to go down all those Thundering Titans, even though... <laughs> 
I guess we probably should. Well, let's see if we can do that one more time. That was actually the full combo with a very full graveyard. Our our Sundry Titan wasn't that good, but it didn't really matter. When you reanimate like 20 things from your opponent's graveyard, you're probably you're probably good. On to game number three. Can we actually win a match against soldiers? That's the real question. This thing's okay. The Sundering Titan's not great, but Jace and Wandering Emperor are good, and Stitcher Supplier exists. Recruitment Officer, sure. Ooh, Champion of Wits is also good. Yeah, play the tap land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Ooh, Thalia. That's actually super annoying. Although, a million Champion of Wits is, is not bad. Mill some stuff. Play Desert. Wow, not three non lands. Hopefully, we milled ourselves into some lands here. Esper Sentinel. Thalia. Yup. Down to six. Oh, that's. Well, okay. Champion of Wits. That should solve our land issues. Champion of Wits. Draw two. All right, there's a land. Discards Undering Titan. We really need, like, Black Mana Path to Peril. That would be. That would be our best bet. Yeah, Eternal Wander is so slow. Plus, we want to command the Dread Horde it back. Let's let's discard it. I don't know. With Thalia out, it seems unlikely we're going to get enough mana to cast it. Opponent, untap land. Oh, not Mural. First strike. Undefeatable. Down to 14. Ranger Captain of Eos. What is the point of the Esper mana base? Wow. Spectrum Sentinel. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, there's Path of Barrel. So we just need a Black Source. Champion of Wits can go digging. Path of Barrel probably just wins us the game, right? Or it probably does just win us the game. Yeah, let's let's champion. Go digging for something that makes black mana. As long as we get a black source, we can wrath next turn. Depending on what this Ranger Captain does. But that is the that is the game plan. Draw two. We drew a Fatal Push, which is good. Oh, we can't cast it this turn. Plus there's Thalia. Yeah, let's play the planes. Okay, well, now I guess we just got a top deck in Untap Black Source. Well, I mean, we will try to kill the Ranger Captain. That could stop. Our opponent has been sacking it very aggressively. And we really want to cast this Wrath if we draw Black Source. So double block Ranger Captain. Block the, <laughs> the Spectrum Sentinel. All right, down to 12, get milled. I've never seen anyone play Spectrum Sentinel before. Well, we didn't mill a Black Source. Search party captain. Oh, that's actually, oh. That gets around the path of peril, doesn't it? Oh, that's awkward. So those are gonna live. Oh, and that does, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, and it's tapped. Okay, so okay, new plan. We can kill the Thalia. Oh, opponent gets to draw cards. Kill the Thalia, take a taunt, and then cleave path the peril. The creature, oh no. Oh, that means, we, I think that means we're dead. Three, six, oh yeah, this does kill us. We have to kill the Lord to not die right now, but that means the Thalia lives, so we can't cleave the path of barrel. Mm, that was close. Game two though, game two was epic. That was a good one. Game three, eh, let's think about game two. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Against the odds time, we are trying to combo off with the Wanderer. Wanderer Tribal with Command the Dreadhorn. We got a bunch of Wanderers. We have nothing to do early though, so I think we have to mulligan, as sad as that sounds. Still not good, but we can put a Sundering Titan to the bottom. We got a Stitcher Supplier, Jason turn three to draw. Opponent also mulliganing. Opponent, Watery Grave. Well, Caves of Coilos and Stitcher Supplier. Mill some guards. Wouldn't mind the Rafine's informant to get rid of the Sundering Titan. Hard casting Sun. Oh, oh God. Well, <laughs> I guess we don't gotta worry so much about about uh, milling ourselves. Opponent appears to be an actual mill deck. Well, our graveyard's gonna be full. That's the good news. The bad news is. We have a lot of cards that, yeah, like Stitcher Supplier that is helping our opponent at the moment. Mill, 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 draw even more Sundering Titans somehow. We've drawn every every Sundering Titan. Uh, well, Jace, on the cheap. Opponent is down to three cards. All right, drown in the lock. 
opponent. Land cracks it. Maybe the Wandering Emperor can get there. We are on a, on a weird clock. We are on the, our library is being, oh no, this is real bad. Yeah, opponent. Well, so much for the, our opponents only got three cards thing. Now Jace is drawing infinite cards. We're gonna run out Wandering Emperor. Oh, this Jace is gonna, wow, Jason Mill's actually really good, isn't it? Because Jace is gonna be four mana draw six. And then even though we can maybe kill it, like our opponent went from a card in hand to maybe discarding the hand size. <laughs> oh, cacophony, cacophony to mill some cards. Uh-huh. How about some more cacophonies? Uh, yeah, we're almost milled out. Well, kill your Jays. The problem is, we're basically dead to almost any mill spell, which I guess means we might as well just keep trying to play the game plan. We can't keep these Sundering Titans. So I guess we just run stuff out and pray. We're definitely dead to Jays. We're dead, I think, I mean, we're dead to Cacophony. We're dead to everything. We need our opponent to have nothing. <laughs> Five lands. All right, that's a Jays. And we will scoop. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. I think we can take out all of our mill cards <laughs> and trust that our opponent is gonna do, do the milling for us. So we're gonna go down all the Stitcher suppliers. We're gonna go down all the Meyer Tritons. We can keep the looting effects, I think. We gotta keep something. And I guess a Sundering, well, Thundering Titan. Yeah, let's try it like that. We get a bunch more interaction and we don't have to try to mill ourselves because our opponent's gonna do that. Yes, we will play first. Yes, we will mulligan the one lander. This hand is good, except we don't have black mana. Probably keep it and put hmm, Fracture to the bottom. Yeah. We would like to draw Black Source for the Thought Seas. Our Jaces should also be good in this matchup just because our graveyard is probably gonna be full. Ravines in format. Well, run it out. Do some conniving. Discard Eternal Wander. Can you beat a 3 2 opponent? Opponent. Cling to dust. Sure. Well, if that's their graveyard hate, that's good news. Glimpse. Mill 10. Well, I mean, we get to play a Jace. That's something. Not fully powered yet. 10 cards. We could try to wait for another mill spell. We need to hit our lands though. We need to get down Wandering Emperor next turn. Let's just mill our opponent and draw. No secret. If we ever get to command the Dreadhorde, it should be absurd. Cause our graveyard is gonna be so full and our opponent's not really pressuring our life total. Tasha's, well, that shouldn't be great. Yeah. <laughs> Tasha's hideous laughter is kind of weak against our deck. Uh, Champion of Wits. Do some. Oh, still no black mana. I want to keep Wandering Emperor in case we ever get to command the Dreadhorde, although we're so far away. I think we have to keep Thought Seize. Yeah, I guess we got to pitch the Wander, sadly. Whipping on lands there is pretty brutal. Opponent down to 14. Yeah, we really wanted a, a land, especially a black source. Champion of Wits. One of these days we're gonna hit a land. Okay, there's all of our black lands that we have been able to find. So we do get to draw with Jace at some point. I mean, I think we're all in on command the Dreadhorde at this point. Do we keep both of them as a question or can we discard one? We know there's counters, there could be discard. After begging for lands, I think we're actually gonna discard one. <laughs> <laughs> Play Ticnuma, go to combat. Opponent gonna draw four Magic the Gathering cards. Well, hit ya, down to nine. Actually, maybe, hmm, maybe our most realistic plan is the beatdown. Let's Thought Seize. See what interaction our opponent has. Jace, wow, it's a lot of mill. Hideous Laughter, two Cacophonies, Jace Drown in the Lock. 27, yeah, we probably gotta take the Jace, unfortunately. I mean, we do have lethal in two turns. Our opponent can start slinging mill spells, but we only need two more turns of attacking. Cacophony, mills us for eight. Thankfully, we have so many expensive cards that Hideous Laughter is not that effective. We might have a shot here. We might have a shot. 19 cards left. I was gonna be super close. Hideous Laughter, all right. Still hit like 10. Oh, this Thought Seize is nice. Okay, Thought Seize, take Cacophony. I think we're good, opponent's got a top deck. Hit ya, down to two. Jace, we are not going to draw here. 
Okay, no top deck. We just need them not to draw a mill spell this turn. And we have it. Opponent top decks a mill spell this turn. <laughs> Jace, good a mill for sure. Against the odds time, we are doing some more wander tribal wombo combo. Ooh, this hand actually looks pretty good. We got the command the Dread Horde. We got multiple rummaging effects if we hit blue mana. Knight of the Ebon Legion, all right. Black aggro, maybe, maybe vampires, we'll see. Uh, well, we will pitch an Eternal Wander. We do need a blue source to get to this champion of its passes. So well, even more command the Dread Hordes. Ooh, thought sees. That could be an issue. We wanted the Wandering Emperor to snipe this Knight of the Ebon Legion. Knight of the Ebon Legion right now is fine, but once it starts growing, it becomes an issue. We really need that blue source. Once we get a blue source, we can discard this expensive stuff and start working towards command. We also need to find the Wanderer, like OG Wanderer, to really complete the combo. About it, Fabled Passage cracks, it gets a planes. And, oh, Soren. All right, looks like vampires. Well, what are you putting into play? Okay, Nighthawk Scavenger. That is better than it could have been. Ravines in format. Well, at least we get to loot away. My god, we cannot find a land. Loot away the Sundering Titan. Attack the Soren. If you want to trade with Nighthawk Scavenger, we will accept it. All right, that's, that is a win. <laughs> we are very happy with that trade. Soren, once it's already ticked down, is a little less scary, at least for a couple turns. Plays a tap land and Phyrexian Arena, interesting. Land, oh, thank you, Magic Gods, finally. All right, Deserted Beach, Champion of Wits. Well, oh, there's a Wanderer too. Oh my goodness, we might be doing it. We might be doing it. Discard Eternal Wander, discard Mire Triton. We're gonna keep both Command the Dread Hordes in case there's discard. Opponent lets it go. All right, draws with Arena. I mean, we have what we need in the graveyard. We're a land and this Eternal Wonder living away from, from doing our thing, from actually doing the full thing. Opponent gets and hits us. Are we pumping? Yes. So we're taking five. If this grows a little more, we can snipe it with the Wander. Ravines in format. Well, actually, maybe we just play the Wanderer. We can play the Wanderer, and if we top deck a land, we get to do our thing. I think we go for it. We need it to live, and we need to top deck a top deck a land, and then we get to do the world's greatest command, the Dreadhorn. Oh, come on, don't have too much removal. Fatal push. Oh, we do need the Wanderer to live. If our opponent can go removal spell into kill Wanderer, we're very sad. We can still command the Dreadhorn if we draw land, but it's not going to be the same. We want the we want the max. We've been trying to do this for several matches. About it, we will jump faster than we've ever jumped before. Land. Untap land, untap land, untap land, untap land, untap land. Okay, Ooh, we did it, we did it, we did it. Shipwreck Marsh. We're going all the way. If they kill the Wanderer in response, we get wrecked, but we will take a Nighthawk Scavenger and a Soren. We'll go to our graveyard. Eternal Wander, Wandering Emperor, Rafine's Informant, Meyer Triton, Rafine's Informant, Champion, Sundering Titan, all nine, get them all. Six mana, get the entire graveyard into play and Oh, damage is prevented. Here comes the Sundering Titan. We get to blow up some lands. Oh, we did it. We actually really did it. We have all the Wanderers. All the Wanderers are assembled and we get to do the Sundering Titan shenanigans. Discard, discard for the future because we got another Command the Dread Horde. I mean, we shouldn't need it, but if we do, we can do this again. All right, loot, discard. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Do some rummaging, discard an informant. Now, Sundering Titan, blow up your two dual lands. We don't have any basics. Now we will Eternal Wander, blink the Sundering Titan. Unfortunately, our opponent has these isolated chapels, so we can't get the full Armageddon. Leaves the battlefield, blow up two more lands. Opponent's down to three mana, uh, and then we will exile the Knight of the Ebon Legion, and then we will use your Soren to put a counter on your Nighthawk Scavenger, and opponent, done, 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 and that's the combo. That's what we've been wanting to do. That's what we've been trying to do. When it works, it is so sweet. Oh my goodness, that was sweet. Oh, that was a good one. All right, we'll bring in some uh, some removals. See if we can do it again, I guess. On to game two versus vampires. Well, two lands a little scary, but 
We can get to Jace if we get three lands. And we do have a bunch of a bunch of planeswalkers in hand. Godless Shrine for opponent and Legion's Landing. Sure. So many Sundering Titans. We're very good at drawing Sundering Titans at the moment. Opponent, Isolated Chapel and Dusk Legion Zealot. Draw a card. Mm hmm. Gets us down to 19. Well, Stitcher Supplier. Mill some cards. Wow. Mill two Champion of Wits. We actually would have rather drawn them, I think. At least one of them, but if we get to seven mana. Oh, no. Opponent is off to a much, a much better start this game. Okay. We probably have to run out Jason draw a card. We need to hit our lands. Like, look at look at the average mana value of our hand at the moment. We really need to hit land drops. Uh, mill ourselves. Oh, mill two lands. But we draw land, okay. Not feeling great about where we're at, but we'll see. Opponent, Fable Passage, cracks it. So we can get down the Wanderer, but it doesn't actually do anything at the moment. Only kill stuff with power for a greater, almost. Twilight Prophet's getting there. If our opponent keeps pumping it, it'll turn on our wander at some point. All right, kills the Stitcher Supplier, sure. Well, Mill's a bunch of non-lands. Kills the Jays, hits us, flips the Legion landing. Down to 13. And oh, that's a good last card. I don't know about Phyrexian Arena and Vampires, but it's gonna be very good for our opponent here. Do we just Wandering Emperor and, well, we, hmm. If we play it now, we can snipe the Twilight Prophet and our opponent doesn't get a card off of it. But then we lose the Wandering Emperor. I think we need it to, oh, this is actually kind of funny. So what we want to do is Wandering Emperor snipe something. Next turn we can, we can um, uh, wander a combo with Wandering Emperor and the Wanderer by growing one of our opponent's creatures. About it. Uh, probably the wrong vampire, but that's fine. Uh, oh no, Sanctum Seeker. Okay, yeah, this is not great. Opponent goes to combat, attacks, attacks. Sadly, we're gonna end up killing Twilight Prophet anyway. Emperor number one, Wandering Emperor. Snipe Twilight Prophet. Drop to two. Well now, Take up Wandering Emperor on your Sanctum Seeker, yes we're sure, makes it big enough that we can play the Wanderer in Exile Sanctum Seeker, combo. <laughs> That's as close as the Wanderers get to comboing, I think. <laughs> that and Command the Dreadlord. Opponent draws two because of Phyrexian Arena. I mean, that was a sweet synergy, but I think we're still dying most likely, unless our opponent just draws nothingness. Then kill all of our Planeswalkers. I mean, I guess if we hit lands, Eternal Wanderer could swing this. Opponent, gonna flip, but it legend rules. Sure, sure, sure. We really need like a Champion of the Wits to get rid of these Sundering Titans. Even a Rafine's Informant, just some way to loot. Danto Vanguard. And uh, another Twilight Prophet. Okay, looking kind of... Oh, that's another one. All right, well, <laughs> GG Vampires, GG. Not enough lands. We drew almost as many Sundering Titans as lands there, which is kind of amazing. <sighs> Let's just run it back. I think we're fine. We get to be on the play, which is nice. We will play first. Sand's not close to doing our Wanderer stuff, but it seems decent. We actually can just play things early in the game, which is kind of a rarity with this deck. Concealed Courtyard, go opponent, Swamp, and. All right, takes a Fracture, interesting. Well, play the land, run out the Mire Trite, and mill a couple cards. Holding onto the Refrains and format means if we draw Sundering Titan, which we're very good at, <laughs> somehow we can uh, get in the graveyard, which is nice. Legion landing makes one one sure and oh, another thought series okay well Technuma could do something eventually I mean I guess at this point we're gonna connive just to get a body on the battlefield champion of wits yeah let's discard it grow the Rafines informant so we can block and keep the lands I'm glad we discarded the champion of wits because our opponent had thought sees number three. Always feels good when you fizzle a Thossies. Although that means your hand is, has no action in it, which is, I guess, a little worse. Pony gets a planes, passes. Jano. Well, play the shipwreck marsh. Go to combat. Yeah, opponent's down to 12. I think we start attacking. Hit you down to nine. Opponent. Dusk Legion Zealot. Draws a card. Mm-hmm. 
Ooh, no land. Are we gonna take Numa? Or are we trying to wait to get to this champion of Wets? Yeah, I think we do. Let's channel it, see what we find. Wandering Emperor, pretty good. We are trying to play Wanderers after all. Ooh, add a card waste. Well, go to combat. Wandering Emperor is really nice here because if our opponent tries to double block, we can uh, use the first strike to kind of blow our opponent out. Well, this might not be the big combo win, but looking good for being a win potentially. Opponent does try to double block. Well, Wandering Emperor, all right, no fatal push, please. Tag up on the informant. Ooh, it worked. Okay, kill them both. Opponent goes to six, and they're actually kind of kind of dead on board ish here. Opponent casts a lock, Wayne Dusk Legion. Zealot draws a card. Opponent passes. And Heartless Act the Mire Dragon. Sure. I mean, the problem for our opponent is this Champion of Wits is going to be coming back. Like, even if they can stabilize, Eternalized Champion of Wits is a lot of value. Uh, so many Dusk Legion Zealots. Bonet, Dusk Legion Zealot draws a card. Down to four. And a Danto Vanguard. Danto Vanguard, a little less scary when your opponent's at four. <laughs> Just a smidge. Well, play a Jano. Get back, Champion of Wits. Draw. Oh, Champion of Wits is still a pretty good card. If the game goes long enough, it's pretty good. Draw four. Discard two. Ooh, there's Command the Dread or two. Probably just champion. We can just eternalize again, uh, but our opponent's gonna die. We can cast a big command the dread horde, but I think our opponent's just dying too quickly here. Stays at four. I mean, opponent needs, I don't even know. They need something really, really good here that's probably not in their vampire deck. Oh, do we get to see a command the dread horde? We're at 21. Even without, yeah, opponent, all right. <laughs> Scoops it up. Well, game one was the dream like we finally actually did the full thing and it was it was worth all those brutal losses to mono green devotion and mel <laughs> sweet 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 so what did we learn this week about wanderer tribal combo in historic and record wise the deck wasn't great we played 10 matches overall we won three of them so 30 percent match win percentage which sounds about right for the deck uh, the deck it's not super competitive that said it does do really cool things and we did pull off our combo multiple times we got the full combo with sundering titans and eternal wanders off the command the dread horde with og wander on the battlefield we also just got to see command the dread horde being really good if there's one takeaway from this other than wanderers are like pretty powerful planeswalkers uh to the point where we gotta like power down our deck to make it against the odds but command the dread horde was shockingly effective yes it's great with the combo but it was actually pretty good even when we couldn't combo with it we had that absurd game against death shadow where we we're at like five life and reanimating a death shadow in Alorus was enough to let us win the game going down to one life for command the dread horde so i feel like command the dread horde it might be a bit of a sleeper like that card might need to be reevaluated. Uh, as far as the deck overall, though, it's funny. The combo's really sweet. We got a lot of decent cards in it, but Sunray Titan can be a little bit hit or miss. Uh, we saw some matches where it's really good and we comboed off. Other matches, our opponents like on a mono color deck, or they have a bunch of lands without land type, so it's not as good. So it's a little bit inconsistent, although it is really funny when it works. So I don't know. If you're trying to like rank up, you're not going to play Wanderer Tribal, but if you want to get the best command the Red Hordes of all times, it put like 20 soldiers into play or like all the planeswalkers into play. We did ridiculous things with this deck. Uh, it's a pretty good option to do wacky stuff like that. So anyway, that's Wanderer Tribal. That's been our Against Odds for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.